Hi, and welcome to this video. In this video, I'll show you how you can uh, provision uh, a couple of VMs easily that is prepared to spin up a Rancher a Kubernetes cluster on them. I made this small project. It's not uh, a done project or anything. It's just a, a hobby project. So there are some things that are hard coded. But uh, let's look into it. So we have our KVM or libvirt here, the virtual manager, and we have cloned the repository. And if we look at it here, we can see that we have a provisioning script here. And if we run provisioning and then the number of machines we want, it will start to create our virtual machines in uh, the manager. You can see it's spinning them up in parallel to speed it up a bit. This will take some time, so that's why I started them now, and then I'll go through uh, the script. So there are some things that are hard-coded. So if we look at the script here, let's go up to the top. You can see that we have a folder in the root called vm-disks. This is where we save all uh, uh, VM uh, hard drive images. And then we have another folder called um, CD images also in the root. This is where I have my CentOS minimal uh, ISO image. Um, if you use another image, you need to change this. And if you're using other locations, you need to change these as well. Uh, but essentially, it's a loop that uh, creates VMs uh, in parallel, and then it also creates a um, cluster.yaml file to use with the RKE, the Rancher Kubernetes engine, um, when they're done. Um, yeah, so you can see it's generating kickstart files for each of these VMs. I have this template that I use. Uh, in order to, for this to work, you need to generate a SSH key. Um, and this script will then grab that and uh, put the public key into these VMs so you can SSH into them without uh, using a password. Here we can see the cluster YAML file uh, used by our key. And if we look at it, you can see that it adds every node. They get a uh, IP address corresponding to the number, like uh, one, two, three, four. I wanted four machines. It uses a user called ARKE uh, that I create on the machines. You can see that in the template. And then the roles, I add all three roles to all of them. So you can go in and just delete the, the roles that you don't want on the, on the node. And here you can see the the SSH key that we use. And because I installed the CE Docker Edition, I need to add this because they check on the, the old version that type. So if we edit this and say we want one master only, and then we want workers, so we just delete these roles, and then we save it. And then we're basically ready to install Kubernetes with RKE. But the machines are not ready yet, as you can see. So what we'll do instead, we'll uh, spin up the Rancher UI. So if we go to here, and then we search for Rancher um, Quick Start Guide, we go here, and then we have to server and manually start it. And then we go down here, you'll find a command that you can run. I don't need the sudo. I'll just copy this and then I'll run it here. And it'll listen on port 80 and uh, 443. So what I've done is um, I've added some entries to my etc host file. Um, so if we look at host file, we have a rancher.pragma entry, oh, sorry, grep, 
here pointing to my hosts machines uh, IP. I also have um, added each machine and they get a host name like this. So you can see I have up to six machines here. The reason why I need to do this is that in order for these virtual machines to resolve this, um, DNS masquerade is used. Um, so they inherit my uh, entries from my etcd uh, or EDC host file. So you need to add those. Now, what we do next is we'll try to go to ranger.pragma.com. We use a self-signed certificate, so we'll have a warning. We don't care. We need to set a password for the admin. I'll just say, uh, give it a password, and then continue. And this is the base URL we'll enter. This is the one we're accessing from, so that's fine. And then we're in, so that's great. So now we'll add a cluster and we'll import one because we're already creating it with the RKE, but they support all other stuff as well. We'll call this production create. So now we're ready for the nodes uh, to be ready. Um, and then we'll just need to run this one uh, when we're ready. Uh, so let's go back here and see there's still provisioning here. So what it does is it uh, creates the RKE um, user. It copies the SSH key in, so you can SSH to it. And it installs uh, Docker CE on the machines. And that's basically it. Um, let's see. Uh, yes, so when it's done, we'll get a, a Kubernetes config file as well. Um, that is when uh, RKE is done, uh, by the way. I've been playing with a small backup script um, just for fun that you can use RKE to take a snapshot of uh, etcd and give it a name, and then you can uh, copy it back to your host machine because it's saved on the on the master node. Um, yeah. And we can look at uh, the template here. Uh, this is the default things I've set in. Uh, you can see the Europe Copenhagen time zone and the Danish keyboard and DK Latin one. You obviously need to change that. I add uh, a network, etcd, uh, eth1, uh, zero, sorry. And then I um, give it a, an IP. This is changed, so this is why it's a template. I replace these with the set in my provisioning script. And here I set the, uh, the partitionings. Um, yeah, and you can see the password for the AK uh, RK user is just pragma. You should probably change that. Yeah, I add uh, the SSH keys to the authorized keys. Um, copy it to the .ssh folder. Yeah, and then I install Docker here at the bottom. So be free to play with it, change it, uh, make pull requests. That would be awesome. Um, I hope they'll be done soon here. Oh, now you see they're shutting down, so now they're done. So let's start them up again. So if you don't know what to put in your host's uh, ETC host, uh, it generates this uh, host entries that you can use. So it'll be easy for you. So now we are ready to install Kubernetes. So we use RKE. You need to download that binary and place it somewhere in your path, make it executable. And then we say up because it'll use the cluster.yaml file. So let's run this and see what happens. Now we'll give a warning on the Docker version. And this is again, because I'm using the CE version uh, from Docker and it's pulling some images to set up 
Kubernetes on the nodes. And eventually it'll create a config file for me to use with uh, kube control or kube cuddle. And once it's done, we can uh, add it to our UI, to the manager. And when we've done that, I'll deploy a small web application so that we can see that the ingress works as well. So you can deploy application and see it works. So now it's pulling images, the hypercube. So it's setting up etcd, the control plane, the cube API server, and the controller manager and scheduler. I think it'll be done soon. It usually don't take a long time for this. It's everything runs in containers on the host, so it just needs to pull them and uh, run them. So it's quite fast. Okay, so it's done. Let's clear it and see what we've got. So here you can see we have a kube config cluster.yaml and uh, what we can do with that is a kube control get cs kube uh, config and then that one that will tell kube control to connect to the cluster with the certificates and then we get a response so that's great so if we get parts all namespaces we can see that it is booting up the containers in the cluster. So if we do a watch and one, you can see when it's done, it's still missing some containers here, container creating. It's getting done soon, I think. We're only missing the cube DNS now, yeah. Missing the last one here. Yeah, so now we have a cluster up and running. So that's great. So let's add this cluster to our manager, the web UI. So we go back here and we copy this command. We don't need to run the first one because we already have a cluster admin um, in our cluster. And this won't work because we're using self signed certificate and it'll break for that but this one should work so we do this the only thing we need to add is the cube config file so it knows how to connect to the cluster so let's do that and go back to our watch you can see it's creating the cattle cluster agent and some nodes once that's done let's go back to the UI click done we did this, we can see that it's waiting for this cluster to be up and running. So it's pulling the images, starting them, and then the UI should react. So now they're getting up. Yeah, now it's running. You can see it reacted over here, waiting for API to be available. If we go in, still waiting.
I don't know why it uh, terminates them and restart new ones. I haven't figured out why it does that, but uh, yeah, and now it's ready. We can see how much CPU we're using, the memory and parts and so on. And we could go in on notes and see information on these notes. So that's good. Yes. So we can go in here, you can see globally, we have our clusters, we have the production one. We can see, we can go into the actual cluster, we can go into the to the projects or namespaces here, like default, and here we can see load balancing, service discovery, that's the services, volumes, and a pipeline thing. So let's deploy an application. So I have, um, uh, Kubernetes, the easy way, tools, and read tool. This is a small container that will uh, just display some text in a uh, well, in a web server. So let's uh, say kube control apply dash f. We need the kube config. Um, See, Ranger Kubernetes config. Then just take these one at the time. And the ingress, I'll show you the ingress when we're done. And the service, we don't need the headless one. Yeah. So, and we tool ingress. This will create a rule for nvtools.exam.com. And if you look in my host file, yeah, I'm pointing to. Uh, uh, the 13th, the th third uh, node in the cluster. So let's see if this works. Uh, watch all namespaces here. Oh, sorry. I need to go back to the uh, folder. We can see we have NV tools running. So with a bit of luck, it should work. Yeah, and we get a response. And with the uh, host name of the pot and the IP. And if we refresh this, you'll see that it changes because we have two replicas running. And here you can see again, workloads, nvtools are running. And we have a service now called nvtools ingress. Um, oh, sorry, load balance. that's the ingress, yeah, sorry. And we can see the service now coming up with the NVS NW service. We don't have any volumes, so that's fine. So we can go back to our cluster here. So that's it for me. Um, another thing you can do here is you can download the kube config file from in here. You can launch a kube control, kube control get, oh, get pots, and you get the pots. So that's how you get up and running with uh, Rancher RKE and my little project. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.